Let's talk about amazing facts that might amaze you. Did you know our bodies actually radiate light? It's not super obvious, but every person you walk by is kind of glowing. A research conducted by Masaki Kobayashi, Daisuke Kikuchi, and Hitoshi Okamura has shown that the human body releases a little amount of visible light, with visible here meaning that it's about 1,000 times dimmer than the light levels that we can see. They used an enhanced and super-sensitive imaging setup involving a cryogenic charge-coupled device camera to capture this glow. And guess what? It changes during the day. We're at our dimmest around 10 in the morning, and we shine the brightest around 4 in the afternoon. The scientists think it's connected to our body's energy metabolism. When tickled, laughing serves as a defense mechanism rather than a response to humor. Research from the University of Tübingen in Germany reveals that our brain's pain prediction center gets all fired up when we're being tickled. So, our brain kind of freaks out and might make us want to either playfully hit the tickler or go into giggle mode. This behavior is rooted in our brain's perception of potential harm, leading to laughter as a sign of submission. Marie Curie is the only person to win the Nobel Prize in two sciences. Marie Curie, born Maria Sklodowska in 1867 in Warsaw, Poland, was raised in an education-focused family. She moved to Paris for further studies and met Pierre Curie, her future husband and research partner in radioactivity. In December 1903, Pierre Curie, Marie Curie, and Henri Becquerel were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences for their collaborative work on radiation phenomena from Professor Henri Becquerel's discoveries. Tragedy struck when Pierre got hit by a horse and carriage and passed away in 1906, but Marie didn't give up and kept on doing their groundbreaking work. Following Pierre's death, the University of Paris's physics department gave Marie Curie her late husband's chair, making her the first woman professor there. In 1911, Marie won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her research on radioactivity. She became the first woman to ever receive a Nobel Prize and also holds the distinction of being the first person to win the award twice, as well as the only individual to achieve this honor in two different scientific fields. Pierre and Marie's pioneering research led to the discovery of polonium and radium, and she later successfully isolated radium as a pure metal. Her work on radioactive elements and compounds had significant implications for scientific experiments and medical applications, including tumor treatment. During World War I, Curie pushed for X-ray technology and made radiological cars called Petites Curies that let battlefield doctors use X-rays to operate better on injured soldiers. In her later years, she led the Radium Institute, now Curie Institute, a radioactivity laboratory established through collaboration between the Pasteur Institute and the University of Paris. Back in the 1620s, tulips were actually worth more than gold. Can you believe it? According to Martha Smith, who's a horticulture expert from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, these plants were like the bling of the era. Only the super rich could splash out on them because they were so darn rare. Like, seriously, one of those fancy Rembrandt-type tulips cost about $1,500 back then. That's like ten times what a skilled craftsman made in a whole year, or enough to buy a huge house. Crazy, right? The glitter we are familiar with today came into existence in 1934 thanks to Henry Rushman, a cattle rancher from New Jersey, who also had a side gig as a machinist. He unintentionally created it while inventing a machine to cut photofilms and paper. Every now and then, the machine had its quirks, making these little shiny cellulose bits. The employees saw them and thought, hey, that could be cool as snow for our Christmas trees. And just like that, modern glitter came to life. Rushman and his partner, Harry Goetz, started making glitter from materials like mica and metallized cellulose acetate film. When glass glitter became scarce during World War II, Rushman tapped into a market for ground-up scrap plastics, turning them into glitter. In 1943, Rushman bought Meadowbrook Farm in New Jersey, 
founding Meadowbrook Farm Inventions in 1948, later renamed Meadowbrook Inventions, Inc. Rushman also patented a film cutting mechanism and other glitter-related inventions. Lettuce and sunflowers might seem really different, but guess what? They're actually in the same plant family. Even though lettuce is low to the ground and sunflowers are tall and impressive, they both belong to the Asteraceae family, also known as the sunflower family. This family is a big deal. It's super diverse and has lots of flowering plants. Some, like lettuce and Jerusalem artichokes, are good to eat. Others, like asters, daisies, and marigolds, look pretty in gardens. There are even plants in this family that make stuff like chamomile tea and oils for cooking, like sunflowers and safflowers. Cool, right? You see those apples you grab from the supermarket? Well, they're not exactly fresh off the tree. Truth is, by the time they make their way to your cart, they might have been hanging around for almost a whole year. Yep, from picking to shipping to storing, it's quite the journey. The U.S. Department of Agriculture uses a gaseous compound called 1-methyl-cyclopropane. This plays tricks on time itself by blocking a gas called ethylene that's all about making fruits ripen and age. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and comment. A subscription would really make my day. See you on the next video and have a good day.